more than anything, uh, the chair is a poem about going to the dentist, but that much might be obvious. At its heart, though, it's about that special kind of delirium only a toothache can provide, and the way that pain installs itself into everything. The radio in the dentist's surgery, its window, even children outside become a part of that all-encompassing discomfort. And finally, if you recall, I hope not too often, there's that wash of relief that comes with the pain going away and the unsteady, confused return of the world in the shadow of that pain. Mostly what I've been thinking about lately is how the imagination functions under stress, the stories it invents in order to cope with that stress. The chair is very much a poem of those years between 2016 and 2020, by which I mean the political crises of that time on both sides of the Atlantic. There's something of this moment in it too. A poem goes towards its context, I think. And those bizarre dreams everyone seemed to be having at the start of our lockdowns that feel like someone else's. The incredible image the subconscious produces when the world as we know it changes utterly. The poem is about that too. After great pain, a formal feeling comes, as Emily Dickinson put it. In this poem, the pain is replaced, yes, but what it's replaced by is strange, surprising, unknown, and known. The old Hitachi jewel cassette was pain and elegant with age, and the branches were, and the sash window was open with pain, and the afternoon was adequate and pain. Children roller skating in the street were pain, and the hum of the imminent sunset was. Would I say today was, and all today's airs? Yes, I would bet tomorrow morning on it. My mouth these many years was wealthy with pain. For so many years I thought prodigal meant destined to return transformed and beloved. The dentist doesn't ask me where I've been. I'm tired of the war, I wanted to say. But my jaw fell slack, so he buried the nerve finding in his caulking gun of composite the inverse of a tooth, the way a good eye can find intemperate horses galloping within a block of marble. Then the x-rays. I've been setting off supermarket alarms lately, I wanted to say, to tell someone. Whose are the dreams I'm having? I'm never there on the balcony with free jazz and treason. Then the pain was replaced with its memory, which is to say that nothing ever changes. He left. The hygienist grew ungenerous with silence. I rinsed with something glowing green. You know she talks about you sometimes, she said. Who does, I said. 